Hello. Today we're going to talk to you about bumper ads. I'm going to go over some bumper ad basics. What is a bumper ad? How can it be effective for your brand? And then do a campaign setup, step-by-step, -step, audience building and targeting, and some general housekeeping. What is a bumper ad? Bumper ads are six-second video ads sold on a CPM basis, basically per thousand views. Other video ad formats are cost per view uh, model with regards to pricing. So you'll typically see pricing being the, a differentiator when building out these campaigns, like you would see in maybe a true view. That's set up with a cost per view model. Bumper ads are also short snippets that are meant to complement broader messaging and help extend the reach of a campaign. What I really like about a bumper video is they're non-skippable short video ads. They're aimed at mobile oh. users. They're ideal for driving incremental reach and frequency around the brand. Um, and the targeting is main, mainly for mobile consumption, uh, demographics that prefer to consume video on mobile. Bumper ads can be effective in, in several different ways. Statistics show bumper ads are most effective when combined with other in-stream or video discovery ads, basically video ads that are longer. On YouTube, I think the average video is around a minute. So when you're targeting, let's say, an in-stream video, a longer commercial or a longer story that you're putting out there on a video, if you combine your bumper ad video with those other video sets, you're going to see a bigger brand lift when search occurs. Um, the analysis shows you'll see a lift in the upper funnel metrics around your brand search. Another thing that I like, as mentioned earlier, the video is non-skippable. So it forces people to see the message, um, the full video and ad that you're trying to display um, in that environment. So the real takeaway is think about if you're running an in-stream video, and let's say it's a minute long, and you want to build an audience on video views that watch it, to, let's say 75% of that video. You can build an audience on the YouTube video views, and then you can circle back and build a campaign that's a bumper ad specific to that audience and force them to watch the additional six seconds because it's non-skippable. Um, that's a pretty effective way to combine those different video formats to get the best use. This part, I want to talk to you about campaign setup. I want to go through a step-by-step -step, um, how I've set up a campaign for ourselves and then show also the analysis of in-stream uh, video discovery and bumper bumper ads collectively together. So I'm going to toggle over here to AdWords. You'll see I have had I have the video campaign selected just so that the view is more simpler to navigate in. You see I have my Infinity Video ads set up with in-stream video discovery and the bumper ads, and they're all separate, and there's a reason for that, and you'll see that in the campaign setup. So on the campaign tabs, which is here, you'll see a red button with an arrow. You click that. You'll just default select video. And it's pretty straightforward from here. This is just the standard setup. You'll fill out the selections that um, basically on how you want to target and how you want to set this thing up. The real difference is the video ad format here. This is where you have to separate the different campaign builds. It's just the way that Google has this particular section set up. We're going to leave the campaign name here. You would name it to whatever is relevant. In this case, mine's going to be social media. Let's say marketing in this case. It's going to be a standard format. We're basically going to build a video that's targeted around ads, driving views, awareness, and conversions. You can use the existing video campaigns if you'd like um, to pre-populate the rest of this. I typically like to go through and make sure I've selected everything that I want specific to this campaign. Once again, you have to focus this video ad format, focus on bumper ads and not in stream. If you accidentally select in stream and continue on, you'll have to rebuild and start off and then select bumper ad at this point. You can't go back and edit it. One difference you'll see here is the manual CPM model that we referenced earlier. It's not a cost per view model. It's a cost per thousand pretty much. It's basically on a thousand times that it's viewed, that's what you're willing to pay. You set your daily budget. In this case, let's say 25 bucks a day. We're gonna say that the delivery method is standard, not accelerated. We're going to target the networks of YouTube, video partners, and display. In this instance, we're only going to target United States and Canada. If, let's say, you want to do radius targeting or bulk locations, you can come in here and make those adjustments. You can also exclude um, various locations if you don't want those as well. We're going to target English-speaking um, 
customers, and then your ads can show on eligible devices. Another pretty cool thing, you can set bid modifiers here if you wish. You can make your bid adjustments. We're just going to leave that all default, same with the scheduling, same with the ad delivery. You would hit save and continue and move on to the next part. It takes you to the ad group where you really start to build out the ad associated with the campaign. In this case, maybe I'm going to call this bumper ads, which is that. You're going to want to put in your YouTube video ad. In this case, I already have it here. So you just can select it like I did here or go straight to your YouTube channel and, and paste it in. Once you've selected it, it will highlight it and show it. It shows you what your bumper video ad looks like. You can also take a quick view of what it looks like on partner sites, which is pretty cool. The display URL in this case is going to be marketing360.com. And my final URL is going to be, you know, it's going to match the actual video. In this case, it's social media marketing. Another thing I like to do is I like to always add these ref codes to the end of my URLs. So that way, if anybody clicks the ad, I'll see it come through in the lead source social media management bumper ad. I know the bumper ad drove the lead. So that's something I always like to tie into my ads. You can also use the URL builder um, to put in the UTM codes as, as well. I leave all the rest default use auto generated image, which is here. If you want to upload your own image, you can, which will change this particular section. We're just going to leave it as the user auto generated image because it's the recommended solution. I'm going to leave this for the sake of the demo to be video ad one. You can rename it as you, as you like to make it applicable. Here's where the CPM model is different than the cost per view model. You see the recommended budget. Um, for the per thousand views, remember that is three dollars and fifty six cents to four dollars and seventy four cents. Typically, when I see a range of pricing like that, um, I set it typically on the low end. So we're going to go three fifty. If I don't see the views that I like, um, or the predicted budget spent or analysis over here is not favorable to what I'm trying to target based on the budget, you can make the adjustment here. You maybe want to set that to five. And you see it goes from 9,000, now it's to 6,000. So for some reason it went down, which doesn't make any sense. Let's try this again. Um, so $2. And you see it, it adjusts accordingly. So if we go over to popular video views, so you can make bid adjustments based on more popular videos. So let's say there's a video with a bunch of views out there and you want your bumper ad to be to run on that. This is where you can make a bid modifier adjustment to uh, to make that happen. In this case, we're going to set this back to five. Let's say I want to set this to 25%, basically increase my $5 bid by 25% on popular videos, make that adjustment. It'll take place there. Here's where you can get down into the different targeting, which is interesting. Um, you Typically, I leave this default, any age, gender, status, household income. I leave that to optimize the campaign in a later date, so I leave this default. What I like to do is really dive into these different audiences. There's three different audiences you can select from. There's an affinity audience, in-market audiences, and custom affinity audiences. Which one? What do each one of those mean? I got a little tab here we'll hop over to. The affinity audience is built for businesses currently running a TV ad or would like to extend the reach of a TV campaign. So let's say you're running an outbound TV ad. Um, you can select the affinity audience to target your YouTube folks. Um, and basically tie in the TV campaigns with this. You also can use a custom affinity audience, which is basically the affinity audience with some custom customizable features, basically allowing you to freeform interest, enter down keywords and URLs, so you get a little more granular in the, in the way you're able to filter this audience. The in-market audience, which is what I typically use in this case, is designed to find customers who are in the market, which means they are searching for products and are actively considering buying a service or product like those you offer. So I typically go with an in-market audience when I'm building out any of my video campaigns, and it looks to be more ROI focused. So once I've selected the interest and the audience that best suits my needs, I select that, and then I search. In this case, you can really filter out the different audiences um, that you want to target. In this case, I'm doing a social media campaign, so I'm going to type social media marketing and see what that uh, reveals to me. You see that it highlights the business services category under advertising and marketing services. I would select that. I would hit done. 
and that takes care of the interest category. I like to go a step further and narrow my targeting options because I want to really focus on keywords specific to my campaign because I know my ads are around social media marketing. So I want to target anybody that's looking for social media, media marketing software, social media marketing companies, social media marketing agencies. So any keyword-related search um, or YouTube video around that, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to type in social media, say marketing. Let's find related keywords. In this case, I do a bulk ad because it's just easier to add them all as opposed to hand pick. And then I quickly go through the ones that maybe don't make sense. So you can just X out the ones that you don't want. Maybe I don't want training. Maybe I don't want networking. Uh, so I just come through and quickly, you know, screen through this list and get rid of them. I would hit done in this case. You can continually narrow your audience if you want. I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to run TrueView ads, um, this is where you could select the targeting for remarketing based on that audience list. This is where you could uh, select that particular interest and bypass these other categories that I selected. In this case, we're going to create a bumper ad targeting people that are searching for these search terms that live within this interest around business services. We'll then save our ad group and take a look at the ad. You'll see now in the settings, it's all set up. You'll see the demographics set up. This is where you would optimize out the different age groups, maybe that you're you're spending more money than you want or you're not getting the conversion. Something else to consider that I like to do is in the exclusions tab, I always like to exclude anything game related. So I save that and exclude games out of there or anything adult content or content not rated. I don't want my ad necessarily, my brand associated um, with things that aren't aligned, if you will. So this is where you can build your exclusion specific to what you don't want your ad to show on. You can also do that with regards to placements. If there's sites you don't want to be on, you can do exclusions with placements, uh, which is pretty cool, and you can just type in uh, the site in this case. You can also do websites and apps. Um, so that's that's pretty interesting. You can do mobile apps. Maybe it's all of these. Maybe you don't want to be on any of the apps, Google Play or anything with regards to games or apps. You could build your exclusion list there and it would show up there. So the placements is set. Your content exclusions are set. You have your keywords set. Here you can optimize. It's not a cost per view model, so that's why that looks like that bad default. It's already set to be a CPM model here, so don't worry about that. You see your interests are set based on business services, and you see your demographics. So what I like to do is optimize the data to remove those particular things. Once that's all set up, you go over to the Video tab, and you can see your video is loaded here. You want to make sure that this Analytics tab, you're able to edit your call to action. Now, if this button here, Edit Call to Action, is not visible, it's because your video is not – the video on YouTube, your YouTube channel is not sunk up with your AdWords account. So you have to sync up those two accounts, and then here that makes this particular um, selection available. Here you can enter in your social media marketing headline, which you see visible here. You have your display URL. Once again, you'll see the destination URL, how I have it, and I also use the ref code again because if they click the link, I want to be able to pass that traffic to and be able to measure and analyze to it. If you want an image over here to the left, you can hit Choose File, select the image um, that makes sense, and then it will upload the image for you, and then you can save it out. So let's take a look, and this is a good way to view your ad. Um, you click the ad link, and then you'll see it load. You'll see the call to action overlay. You'll see the ad. It's six seconds, and then it runs, and it's done. And that's how quick the ad is um, at the end of the day. Let's take a look at an existing campaign. That's a walkthrough of how you set, set it all up. Let's take a look at an existing one, which I have right here. This is an, the same campaign I've set up, but I'm already running ads to it. So last seven days, you will see the video has had 45,000 impressions. Um, you see the analytics code is there on the edit call to action you'll see that I've had 408 clicks. Now, the thing that's interesting about it, I've had 408 clicks through to the website that I now can remarket to. And what I am doing is I'm remarketing this traffic on Facebook where I'm getting conversions on Facebook. So that you see no conversions here doesn't alarm me because I'm actually converting them in another channel. But when I look at the combined effort of the same ad 
or same targeting, you'll see that I do have conversions on my in-stream campaign targeting this very same people in social media marketing. So once again, it's important to understand when you're looking at the overall bumper ads and you combine the video formats from in-stream, um, the longer video ad formats with your bumper ad, maybe even doing some remarketing on the video views, that's really what's going to give you the greatest benefit um, at the end of the day when you launch your campaigns.